everyone today we are going to see the new chapter from the nuclear and the radiation chemistry and the chapter heading is elements of radiation chemistry so we will see first the definition of the radiation chemistry the radiation chemistry deals with the physical chemical and the biochemical transformation in matter brought about by the absorption of nuclear radiation so any matter which absorbs the nuclear radiations and after that there is something transformed either physical changes chemical changes or the biochemical changes will be observed and the particle or the nuclear radiation which we have bombarded on the matter that will be of 100 electron volt energy and the boseman value of the kinetic energy of the radiation is equal to 10 raised to 4 at room temperature and when temperature is around 300 kelvin historically the fluorescence on the container glass wall that was observed by ron jane and he observed that there is a radiation effect okay so we will see the radiation discovery so in 1885 the ron jane observed that the fluorescence excited on the container glass wall in the x-ray apparatus so here ron jane has observed the fluorescence phenomena and that fluorescence phenomena will be observed in the x-ray apparatus in 1885 so he discovered that the radiations are there or the radiations are excited then in 1896 beckwerel first reported that example of radiation effect on the matter he observed that blackening of photographic film by radiations from the uranium salt so in 1885 and in 1896 ronjen and beckwerel respectively found that the radiations are observed so ronjen uh, studied the fluorescence experiment on the x-ray apparatus and the beckwerel found the radiation effect on the matter so that he observed that the photo uh, photographic film will become the blackish and uh, this is due to the radiations which are emitted by the uranium salt so by this way the radiations will be discovered now the major characteristics of the different radiations are charged particles as we know the positron and the electrons are the charged particles then the neutrons neutrons are the charged particles then the gamma radiations and their interaction with matter so we will see three different kinds of radiations the charged particles neutrons and the gamma radiations and we will observe the charged particles interaction with matter how neutron will interact with matter and the gamma radiations will need to gamma radiations will interact with the matter so study will be restricted to low and medium energy radiations and the radiations are of 100 electron volt to 2 mega electron volt energy so we will see the first characteristic the interaction of radiation with matter so firstly we will uh, see the charged particles okay so primary effects due to the charged particles this is our first point of today discussion so most of the effects due to low and medium energy radiations on the matter are the overall result of a series of reactions the primary event being electronic excitation so this is a primary event electronic excitation or ionization or the radical formation so as we know when water interacts with either electrons it will undergo the different kinds of reactions say the excitation ionization and the radical formation reactions so sometimes it will undergo the bond rupture uh, reaction and that reactions are called as a free radical formation 
reactions so we will see the primary event how uh, that will be written so the primary event is generally indicated by a wavy arrow so wave like nature of the arrow is there to show the primary event so initially either excitation will occur ionization will occur or the radical formation will occur so first reaction is here electron plus water so when electron collides with water it interact uh, interacts and there is exchange of the energy that's why the energy of the water molecule is increased and the electron will be as it is okay so initially electron interacts with the water molecule energy of the water molecule will become higher and uh, it is present in the excited state so that's why here star is written so h2o star is a water molecule which is present in the excited state and there is excitation of the electron so simply the first reaction is for the excitation then here is a gamma so gamma as we know the energy of the gamma radiation is much higher when we have bombarded the gamma radiations on the water molecule that water molecule directly goes to the excited state or its energy is very higher so h2o star here i have written in both the equations h2o star that represents the water molecule which is having of a higher energy so this two reaction shows the excitation then we will see the ionization so again we are taking the electron and that will be interacting with the water so here the interaction of the water molecule and the electron occurs and one electron from the water molecule that will be removed and we will see the ionization is there so when the one electron from the water molecule is removed after the interaction with the electron which we have bombarded initially so the bombarded electron one and the ejector electron one so both when we add the total electrons will be two electrons and water will become positive due to loss of one electron so this is the ionization reaction as we can get the positive ion and the negative electron is there then we will see uh, again we can bombard the gamma radiations on the water when water uh, interacts with the gamma radiations again here is the one electron lost and that's why the water will become positive so positive ion and the electron will be formed so here is a ionization reaction so you can observe that the first reaction the left side of both reactions is equal or if you see the reactions all this two this two and this two each and every uh, left side of the reaction is same but the products are different that means the reactants are same but the different kind of reaction will occur it will be either excitation ionization or the radical formation after interaction of electron and the gamma radiations with the water molecule so second this is a ionization kind of reactions then we will see the third kind of reaction that is a bond rupture or the radical formation so you can observe here again we have taken the electron plus water molecule they interacts and from that there is a formation of h radical plus oh radical plus electron so here as we know h2o is a water molecule it contains two hydrogens and one oxygen so when we rupture the bond there is a heterolytic fission and that's why one radical comes on the hydrogen another radical will go on the oh so h radical plus oh radical and the bombarded electron will remain as it is so this kind of the free radical formation will observed when electron interacts with water then again we have taken the gamma radiation which is of higher energy that was bombarded on the water molecule then there is a formation of the h radical and the oh radical or the free radicals will be formed so this kind of the primary effect due to the charged particles uh, this is called as a radical formation so we have seen this three reactions excitation ionization and the radical formations
and after the primary event the initial electron now of the reduced energy so bombarded electron is of a higher energy and the ejected electron is of a lower energy so due to primary event the initial electron is of a initial in electron is of a higher energy and due to primary event uh, the generated electron is of a reduced energy so continuous moving through the matter repeating one or other process as long as it has a enough energy so that electron will participate in the one or more in you know, reactions then we can see the second point radiation tracks spurs and delta rays so we will see what is meant by spurs delta rays so here i have written all along the track of a primary particle are formed clusters of active species consisting of electron ion pairs excited species and the radicals as we have seen here the excited species plus charged particle that is electron is there that is electron ion pair is there so you can say that this is the electron ion pair okay so this is the ionization then the excited species this water star this water star that are the excited species and here are the radicals so tracks means a uh, primary particles which are formed in the cluster okay so as we know in the system we have only taken the water and we have bombarded electron and the gamma radiations on that but simultaneously there are various processes occurring like excitation ionization in the radical formation so due to all these processes the products form in the system are this much okay so there is a cluster of all these products either this will be ionization uh, pair or there is excited species and the radicals so all these clusters or all these products are called as a spurs so these clusters are referred as a spurs the number of active species in a spur its mean size and interspersed distance depends on the nature of the radiation and its energy and the rate at which it loses it, its energy in a moving through the medium so simply the number of active species which are present in a spur its mean size and the interspersed distance that depends upon the nature of radiations which we have bombarded initially either it is a gamma radiation that will be electrons that will be positrons or that will be neutrons and its energy and the rate at which it loses energy in a moving through the medium so each spur may contain 2 to 5 excited species and pairs produced by the primary radiation as well as those created by some of the secondary electrons so here in the spurs either two or five species are present here suppose this is a primary electron this will participate in the second event then this will be uh, ejected here then it will part in the next event here so simply spur contains two to five excited species ion pairs that are produced by the primary radiation as well as they are produced by the secondary electrons if the secondary electron has a higher energy which is a greater than 100 electron volt it will branch off from its own track and spurs means simply when second electron uh, which is of a higher energy then again it will uh, part in the next events so it will get separated from its own track and the spurs so this is the radiation tracks and the spurs now we will see the somewhat uh, other uh, information about the spurs each spur may contain 2 to 5 excited species as we have seen the latter the spurs are called as a delta ray track here the secondary electron which is of a energy 
greater than 100 electron volt and it forms the another branches or its own track and spurs so further that are termed as a delta ray track and in the case of the gamma radiation and the electron passing through water the spur diameter is around 2 nanometer and this occur at intervals of about 10 to minus 6 meter along the track so simply the secondary electron when it uh, prepares its own track and spurs that will be termed as a delta ray track so we have seen uh, the track track means simply the cluster of the active species which is uh, of a electron ion pair excited species and the radicals so further we can say that that uh, tracks are referred as a spurs and when there is a primary event, secondary event, uh, we will get the number of excited species, number of free radicals and the ion pairs. So simply when the electron which is ejected electron or the secondary electron and that electron will be of a greater than 100 electron volt energy, it will prepare its own track and spur so we can refer that as a delta ray track. Now, we will see the new point that is a linear energy transfer. So as we know the uh, electron uh, which participates in the primary event then it uh, participates in the secondary event. So it has some kind of the energy and that will be transferred from one reaction to the another reaction. So the primary radiolytic products are formed which we have seen. The electron which are ejected, it will be either aqueous electrons. Then we have seen the radicals are generated like H radical and the OH radical and they interact in their turn in a variety of ways leading to uh, fi final products. And then final products will be different each time. So electron H radical and the OH radical interacts and forms the various products. The yields of the final products depends on the nature of the radiation and the energy as well as it depends upon the nature of the target substance, its atomic number and its mass number or its ability to stop the radiation. So simply the linear energy transfer will occur from the primal radiolytic products and the final products and that yield of the final product depends upon the radiations which we have bombarded initially then it depends upon the atomic number and the atomic mass of the stopping the radiation that matter its mass and atomic number is important so stopping power that will be calculated by using one equation so here is a definition of the stopping power given so stopping power S is defined as S is equal to minus DE divided by DX and whole bracket raised to star is there because it is a activated state is there. So the energy of the excited state that can be calculated. So minus D divided by DX star. So here the rate of energy loss per unit length of the matter that will be calculated as a stopping power. So the rate of energy loss per unit length of the matter the same is also referred to as the linear energy transfer that is LET of the substance for the given radiation. So this is the equation to find out the stopping power s is equal to minus d divided by dx e represent the energy and x represent the length of the matter now there is a new equation that is a Bethe's equation for the linear energy transfer for the charged particles due to collisions with electrons here each point is dependent upon the another here we have calculated the linear energy now we will see the Bethe's equation for the linear energy transfer for the charged particles due to collisions with the electrons so just we have calculated here the stopping power so now we will calculate the linear energy so 
because of the large number of collisions between the moving charged particles and the electrons of the atoms of the stopping matter the energy lost by the former per collision or per centimeter path averages out so as we know we have taken the water molecule and we have bombarded the charged particle as electron and the radiations like the gamma radiation so due to interaction of the charged particle and the uh, matter or the stopping matter the energy will be lost due to the collision so that uh, lost energy that will be calculated per collision or per centimeter path so the following expression was derived by the bethe for calculation of the linear energy transfer for the charged particles so he has given the equation linear energy transfer is equal to minus d by dx for the collision so we have seen this equation here s is equal to minus d by dx so same equation is used for the linear energy transfer in stress we have written the let that is linear energy transfer so minus d by dx for collision and that equation is uh, written here or the value of that minus d by dx is this one 4 pi small z square into e raised to 4 divided by me into v square into n into z in a bracket ln of 2 into me into v square divided by i minus ln of in a bracket 1 minus beta square bracket complete minus beta square and the bracket is complete so this is the equation let here the terms included in the equations are this small e this e is to 4 in which e is included this e is for the electron charge and electron charge is 4.8 into 10 to the minus 10 electrostatic unit then me here me is written that me represents the mass of the electron and the mass of the electron is 9.1096 into 10 to the minus 28 grams then this v this v is for the velocity of moving particle in centimeter per second then the capital n this capital n represents the number of stopping atoms per centimeter square then as a uh, number of stopping atoms that can be calculated by using this equation l into rho divided by capital a now this l is avogadro's number then the rho is the density of the stopping matter then the capital a is the atomic weight of the atoms of the stopping matter and this z which is written here and here that z is a atomic number of the stopping matter then the i i we have written here this i represents the mean of excitation and the ionization energy of the stopping atoms and that will be equal to 30 electron volts now the remaining term is only one that is beta that beta represents the v upon c that v is the velocity of the moving particle in the centimeter per second and uh, divided by c is there this is the velocity of the radiation so you can say that it is the velocity of the light so all these are the terms which are included in the equation of the linear energy transfer and that equation was derived by the scientist bethe so this is the equation and now there is a new form of the equation is here bethe's equation that can be simplified as let is equal to de divided by dx so the rate of change of the energy with respect to change in the length of the matter for the collision is directly proportional to capital m into z square divided by capital e so here as we know z is the atomic number e is the change in energy x is the um, length of the matter so m is the new term so mass of the moving particle that will be capital m z is the atomic number and the capital e is the energy of the moving particle 
So the above expression shows that the LET increases up to a maximum as V decreases along the path. After which the LET decreases along with V. So from this we can see that the linear energy transfer increases with decreasing V value. So V is a velocity of moving particle in the centimeter per second. As the velocity of the moving particle is increasing, the LET will be less. So when LET is higher, the velocity will be less. So this is a vice versa relation of the linear energy transfer and the velocity of the moving particle. So now we are going to see the next point. That is a Bramstall hung radiations. So, in the Bramstall hung radiations, we will consider all the particles are the charged particles and uh, they are moving particles. So, the charged particles move in the matter. So, when the charged particles are moving through the matter, they will lose the energy, and that energy can be lost by two modes. So, by collision with the orbital electrons of the stopping matter, this is the first way. And secondly, by emission of radiation, that is X-ray, as the particles approach atomic nuclei of the stopping matter. So, either by collision or by emission, the charged particles when interacting with the matter or when moving through the matter, they will lose the energy. So, as a charged particle comes close to the field of an atomic nucleus, it suffers a change in its acceleration. That acceleration will be either positive or negative, which on the classical electromagnetic theory must result in the emission of radiation. And that will be uh, called as a bremsstrahl hung emission. So, simply the emission of the radiation that are referred as a bremsstrahl Hung. So, when charged particle comes to close with the atomic nucleus, there is a change in the acceleration and there is emission of the radiation and that emission of radiation is referred as a Bremstrahl hung. So, when we see the spectrum of the Bremstrahl hung radiation, the spectrum will be continuous. And from 0 up to the energy of the particle itself, this will be in the X-ray region. And the net uh, linear energy transfer is the sum of the dE by dx of the collision. That is a linear energy transfer plus dE by dx of the Bremsstrahl. So, simply uh, net LET is the sum of the collision energy and the Bremsstrahl energy change. So, simply though the full expression for d by dx Bremsstrahl hung is a lengthy one and is given by equation minus d by dx for the Bremsstrahl hung radiations is directly proportional to small z square into capital Z square divided by capital M square. So, here as we know is the energy change x is the length of the matter. Brem is a Bremsstrahl hung radiation and the small z, this small z represent the charges of the particle and the stopping matter. As we know the charge of the positron is a plus 1, charge of the electron is a negative or the minus 1 and the charge of the neutron is a 0. So that charges will be written in the place of this. Then the capital Z represent the atomic number of the stopping matter. And capital M, so capital Z represents the atomic number and capital M represents the mass of the particle. So, we have seen this equation to find out the linear energy transfer for the Bremsstrahl hung radiation. So, simply minus delta E divided by delta X for the Bremsstrahl hung radiation that that is directly proportional to small z square into capital Z square divided by m square. So, loss by Bremsstrahl hung is very important for the particles of lower mass and stopping matter of higher z value that is atomic number. So, mass of the Bremsstrahl loss by Bremsstrahl hung that is very important for the particles of lower mass 
and the stopping matter with higher z value so particle mass will be low and the stopping matter atomic number will be higher so for electrons of the energy capital e mega electron volt the ratio when we have taken the electrons so the change in energy or the energy transfer that is e that will be calculated by the following way delta e or d by del x for the bemstrahlen radiations divided by d by dx for the collision is equal to capital e into z divided by 1600 me into c square is equal to e into z divided by 800 so here me into c square that value is given 0.51 mega electron volt so e is the energy z is the atomic number then me is the mass of the electron and c is the velocity of light so they have given us value of this one so this ratio will come e into z divided by 800 so our last point from the first charged particles that will be serenko radiations so uh, till now we have seen the points the primary effects due to the charged particles or the interaction of mat uh, radiations with the matter so first point is primary effects due to the charged particles we have seen how the excitation ionization and the uh, radical formation will occur then we have seen the radiation tracks spurs and the delta rays formation then we have seen how the energy will be transferred from the Uh, primary radiolytic products then the, uh, this energy is called as a linear energy transfer then we have seen the bethes equation for the linear energy transfer after that we have seen the bremsstrahlung radiations again here the linear energy is required then we will see the last point from the interaction of the radiations with matter this is a serenko radiations so interaction between higher velocity beta particles and the molecules of the water results into deceleration and the c dash is the speed of light in the medium that is c dash is less than v so v is greater velocity of the moving particle is uh, much higher as compared to the velocity of the light and the process a bluish light is emitted which is named as serenko radiation so simply when we have uh, taken the beta particle and the molecule of the water they interacts and there is a deceleration of the velocity so that the velocity of the light that is a c dash it's uh, less than v so v is the velocity of the moving particle and in that process blue light is emitted and that blue light which emitted this is called as a serenko radiation so the blue light is visible in water surrounding the immersed fuel element in the reactor this is a apsara so in the apsara reaction we will observe that the serenko radiations are there then Imp an important application of the serenko radiation is in its use as a higher energy particle detector in the range of giga electron volts so this is all about the serenko radiations so the next points uh, from the interaction of the radiations with matter that are passes of neutrons through the matter and the interaction of gamma radiations with the matter so we will see this two points in the next lecture so we will stop here